Good morning. How are you today? How's the week going? Are you having a good time in Jesus? Is it being a fruitful week? Are you learning more about him each day? We have a fascinating incident to share together, and you'll find it in Mark 10, verse 17. The Bible says this, As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him, fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good, Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Now listen to this. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you'll have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Let's analyze this story because I think you're going to find here some truth that you can learn from it. First of all, this man falls on his knees before Jesus. He recognizes something special in Jesus. Whether he's worshipping or not is rather doubtful because he starts off, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He may have recognized him as the Messiah, but what he was trying to do was struggle with this whole subject of eternal life. Jesus comes back at him and says, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God. But then notice what Jesus said. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and mother. The response is remarkable. Teacher, all these I have kept since I was a boy. There was something about this man that was very special. He was able to say with a clear conscience to Jesus, he had kept the commandments. And Jesus then, it's a beautiful sentence that Mark puts in here, verse 21, Jesus looked at him and loved him. If you go through the gospel stories, it isn't very often that that is said. There was something special, something beautiful about this man. Jesus looked at him and loved him. There was an obedience in him to the commandments. There was a lot to commend this man. So it's a beautiful scene as they share together. He really had done what the Lord his God had said to him. But then we find something else. One thing you lack, Jesus said, go and sell all that you have and give to the poor. This is a challenge I want to bring to you. Is there anything in your life that's preventing you from entering the kingdom. As you listen to my voice this morning, have you ever truly accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? You see, there is absolutely no other way to come into the kingdom. You can argue that. You can say, Richard, you're being dogmatic. But if you study the Word of God, the only way into the kingdom is by His Son. And if you haven't come by his son, you're not in. Is there any one thing that's holding you back? Won't it be terrible if the day you stand before the Lord your God, one thing blocked you from entering the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus standing there with the Father says, Depart from me, I don't even know you. Now that's hell right there, isn't it? And it can happen. And it happened for this man. You lack one thing. There weren't a lot of things. There was one thing. And you see, it doesn't take much to stop us entering the kingdom. There's a little bit more here that we have to see. Go and sell everything you have. Give to the poor and you'll have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. At this the man's face fell and he went away because he had great wealth. Now it wasn't the fact that he had great wealth. The problem was he had his trust in his wealth. 
And there was the problem. You see, it's so easy to trust in riches. You think about it today. If you don't have much money, if you're really scraping the bottom of the barrel, isn't it true? It's very easy to trust in God and go to the Lord your God and say, Lord, I just need your help. I need you to provide. Lord, you know how difficult this is, and I just don't have much money. That's one thing. But if you've got plenty of money and the income is good and it's not about to stop, then you don't have to have that same trust. Do you see that? This is why Jesus went on to say what he did. But the sad fact is, and listen to the way Jesus put it, if you get rid of all the money, you will have treasure in heaven. You remember he says to us in Matthew's Gospel that we're to lay up treasure in heaven? That's a real statement, isn't it? Are you doing that? You say, Richard, how do I do that? I think a number of ways. Assuming you belong to Jesus Christ, assuming you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior, everything you do in his name, and everything you do with his love, you're laying it up for yourself as treasure in heaven, not here on earth. And the problem is, the world is so keen that we lay up treasure on earth. But Jesus isn't. He says, don't worry about the earthly things. Be concerned about the heavenly. Make sure that the things that you're laying up for the future are in heaven and not down here. Now that's a challenge. And you see, every action you do should be done in the love of Jesus. Paul says this in 1 Corinthians 13, and he talks about it in the negative. He says, if you give to the poor, and if you have your body to be burned, and if you have all knowledge, and if you have all faith, but you don't have love, you're nothing. If you don't have love, you're nothing. What gives the eternal value to everything? The love of Jesus Christ flowing through you and me. Because God is love, it is His love that makes the thing so vital and so real and so everlasting. That's when I lay up treasure in heaven. Now, at this the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. It sounds, and of course we can't prove this, this man missed eternal life that day. He could have had it, and he was so close. And I think there's something else here that we have to see. Some people come so close to the kingdom, but they never enter it. And that's where this man was. And what I plead is that you won't be like that. Maybe you've listened to Charles Stanley, and now you're listening to this program, and you hear the truth of Jesus Christ, and as you listen to it, you have a good feeling, but you've never entered the kingdom. Friend, that is so sad. You're so close, but maybe one thing's holding you back, but you've never taken that step of faith to ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. And friend, that's what you've got to do. Now, let's go on and see what else we see. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. He didn't say no rich people enter the kingdom of God understand that. He said it's difficult for the rich person. Their trust is so often in the wrong place. And yet, if you know anything about the Christian kingdom, you know that there have been rich people who've been a tremendous blessing to the kingdom of God. Where I went to seminary in England, the chairman of the board of trustees was very wealthy. He was a contractor in England. He built the first motorway that we had in Britain. And he gave to God's work in a way that was quite remarkable. Now that's true. And what you often find is, someone who's blessed with money by the Lord our God, uses it faithfully to the service of God, and God just goes on blessing. And sometimes the testimony of such an individual is, the Lord is giving me so much money, I can't even give it away for him. But he finds a faithful steward, and he gives them that money to use to his glory, and they do it. This is the glory of the kingdom. Why doesn't he do it to all of us? I don't think we have any idea. But Jesus says, it is hard for a rich man to get into heaven. Now, the disciples were amazed and confused. And they came back at him in verse 24, and he spoke again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of heaven. 
it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Now, just to get the whole picture here, when you came to the gates of the city or town in those days, there were the main gates. But by the side of the main gates, there was a smaller gate called the eye of the needle. And because it was smaller than the shape of it, if you were on a camel, you could not go through that smaller gate. You had to wait until the main gates of the city were opened. That's why Jesus used the picture he did. The disciples knew very well a camel couldn't get through that little gateway. Now, says Jesus, a rich man trying to get into heaven is just like a camel trying to get through that small entrance. He simply can't get in. So what happens for the rich person? First of all, they have to commit their riches to the Lord our God. Secondly, they have to see that their trust is to be in the Lord and not in those riches. Once they've got hold of that, they've got the first step into heaven. You see, if you apply this to the world, in the world we trust our riches, we trust what we have. So often not what we are, so long as you've got the money you're in. Now that's not true in the kingdom of God. It's what you are in Jesus Christ that matters. And as you listen to my voice this morning, who is it you really trust in? Is it you? Or is it your bank balance? Or is it the Lord your God through Jesus Christ? The way into the kingdom of God is the trust in Jesus. So the rich person can struggle with this. Don't go away with that thought that rich people mustn't get into heaven or there won't be any rich people in heaven. Oh yes, there will but many are blocked by their riches. And it may be for you it's better that you don't have the riches, however much you'd like to have them, because it's not a block for you. You don't have the problem, you don't have to struggle with it. And I think for some people with money, they have to constantly struggle with it and constantly give it back to the Lord. Jesus said it's not easy, and when he underlines that, you can be sure that it's true. But the thought you need to go away with today is the sad one. One thing blocked this man from riches in heaven, from eternal life, for all that he could have received in the Lord our God. And that is terribly sad. And it may not be riches in your life, but make sure there's not any one thing that's preventing you from receiving all that God has for you, because he wants you to inherit the same things as his son has inherited.